With the development of the frontal cortex, the child is quite ready to begin learning at school. But emotions and social feelings are also developing. In particular, children show their attachments by declarations of love and friendship to their schoolmates. Do you have lots of friends? Tell me. Okay. Do you have lots of girlfriends or boyfriends? Yeah, he's just here. It's Arthur. It's Arthur, just over there. And you? This is your girlfriend? No. Oh, really? Do you have one or not? I like playing with the boys better. Oh, well, that's an explanation. What? Well, yes, he has to get married one day. Of course, he has to get married one day. <laughs> Tell me, she's your girlfriend or not? So, do you have another? And you? Yes. You told me you had three boyfriends? Yes. Okay. Is there one you like best? Yes. Who is it? Paul. Because he's nice and he plays with me and all. He's the only boy you play with then? No, sometimes with Luca. Ah, with Lucas too. The boyfriends and girlfriends are the members of the opposite sex with whom the child plays and with whom a close relationship has thus developed. This is the age when the girls sleep over at their friends' houses and the boys are very attached to one another. This is not a question of sexual attraction, but a preference for a partner of the same sex, an attraction for those whom we resemble. It is founded on the behavioural differences that exist between boys and girls. Whereas European scientists tend to give cultural and educational explanations for these differences, Americans often have a very biological point of view. When we look at children, and we look at their behavior, how they respond to frustration, what toys they play with. We see first that from the very beginning, girls and boys differ in their behavior. But how much is due to education, to cultural conditioning, and how much is biological? To gain a better understanding, Professor Michael Lewis has observed more than 150 girls and boys, and he has noted identical behavior in boys in 75% of cases. In his tests, Michael Lewis conceals himself behind a two-way mirror. The child is separated from its mother by a barrier. There's the boy, he is pushing against the barrier. He's trying to get over it. He wants to push it down. This is very typical of the boy in order to solve the problem. Uh, you can see she is uh, upset. Uh, she cries, uh, doesn't try to go over the barrier. This is very typical uh, of uh, girl children. Uh, they ask for help. They don't try to do it themselves. When we look at boys' and girls' response to being frustrated, we say that for boys, they try to overcome the frustration by themselves. But are these differences due to hormones, which are visualized here using the crystallization technique, testosterone in blue, estrogen, and oxytocin in pink? There are two reasons, and probably both are correct. The first is a biological reason. The second is a cultural reason. It is probably the combination of both. Oxytocin is one hormone that we know of, and we know it is related to maternal behavior, uh, to be a nurturant. Uh, we know that uh, uh, girls uh, have more oxytocin uh, than boys. This difference uh, may explain some of the uh, differences between boys and girls. 
Shut up and sleep with me, come on. Why don't you sleep with me? Shut up and sleep with me, come on. Uh huh. And sleep with me. Certain American researchers sometimes tend to put forward biological causes to explain behavioral differences between boys and girls. In fact, these ideas stand in contradiction to recent advances in knowledge concerning neuroplasticity, which show that the brain is modeled by education and culture. In social life, and totally unwittingly, we condition boys and girls differently. For example, we will require of little girls that they be very well behaved and take care of themselves. Whereas we don't make the same demands of boys who can more easily express their anger and violence. The influence of education is therefore primordial, and the older the children get, the more the differences are accentuated. Are you ready? The principle of the following test is to put a boy and a girl in a situation of failure using a puzzle that is impossible to finish. Time is up. You did not finish before the bell. Well, I always got it. Time is up. You did not finish before the bell. You did not finish before the bell. When girls and boys uh, fail in a task, uh, girls show more shame than boys. Boys do not accept blame for failure. Girls do. Time's up. You did not finish before the bell. You did not finish before the bell. The fact that we see differences between girls and boys in test scores does not at all mean that these differences exist since birth. Because the brain is permanently changing as a function of learning and personal experiences. But despite all the advances in our knowledge, the old deterministic ideas are still very much alive for certain educational lobbies, especially in the United States that want to fight against mixed schools. However, a mixed education system is essential to enable boys and girls to know each other and live together with their differences and their similarities. Around 50 years ago, separate classes for boys and girls were abolished. The great majority of schools are mixed. However, over the past few years, single-sex schools have made a comeback in the United States. According to Dr. Kathy Pichura Couture, single-sex schools pay more attention to the different biological tendencies of the two sexes. When you look at the boys, you notice that they don't sit in a traditional fashion. We've got our little boys with the feet up, feet swinging, sitting in the chairs. There tends to be a lot more movement in the boys' classroom, so we actually planned for the movement. And the girls' classroom is much more of a traditional classroom that you would see. And it's, you won't see as much movement in here. Not saying that they don't move, but not as much. Is it every sentence? Oh my goodness! What? We'll have to do this. The again. teachers definitely have to teach differently to an all boys classroom or an all girls classroom. The boys teacher in particular, boys teachers have to plan for movement. If they don't plan for movement, the boys are going to move anyway. But girls teachers have to um, plan for risk taking. They have to bring the girls out of their comfort zone and make them take academic and personal risks, um, which you normally wouldn't do in a classroom. It's really important for the teacher to use maps with the boys because of the part of the brain that they use. They have good spatial relationship. And boys like using maps. It makes South them more interested. Europe. When we look at biological differences, the eyes are one of the most important ones because boys' eyes are wired for movement. So when, even at age four months, you know this isn't a social construct, they're looking at a spinning mobile where a young girls or a baby girls will study the face. Girls are able to read faces, they're able to tell what expressions are, and boys are able to track movement much better. Boys seem to be more skilled in spatial representation and numbers, whereas girls are better at conversation and written expression. 
Once again, neurologist Catherine Vidal believes that the explanation lies not with biology, but with education. To explain these differences in aptitude is to show to what extent the educational context differs between boys and girls in our society. Indeed, little boys are more often pushed into outdoor team games, such as football. And here is the ideal situation for learning spatial orientation. On the other hand, girls are more in the private sphere, in the home, and this is a situation that favors language development for chatting and exchanging feelings. A few years ago, statistical studies showed that on average, boys performed better in certain mathematical tests than girls. In other words, girls did not have the type of brain that made them capable of doing math. At present, new studies have been carried out, and they show that from kindergarten to high school, differences between boys and girls no longer exist.